Hello everyone and welcome back to the Nuclear Humanist. Meet Mark C. Jacobson, a professor at Stanford University. Jacobson has written a comprehensive thought experiment. Now all would be well if he acknowledged it for what it was, a hypothetical view of the future. But he has decided that he could reach fame by pontificating that this is the best plan to achieve deep decarbonization for mankind. What do we mean by deep decarbonization? Basically the complete end of our use of fossil and other carbon-based fuels for energy. Most of us now know that we have to end our reliance on fossil fuels and we know why we need to do this. So I won't tell you this again. Jacobson wants the same thing we do, but it is doubtful that his models describe the future accurately enough. In fact, we may put great doubt in his paper. That's why I initially wrote the Non-Solutions Project, not available in fine bookstores everywhere, and why esteemed scientists actually wrote comprehensive rebuttals, which in essence falsify the Solutions Project, aka 100% water, wind and solar roadmap, as it is called. The first article was published by Ben Hurd et al. It is based around the principle of the burden of proof. The second article was recently published by Christopher Clack et al among which one of my influences, Ken Caldera. Now, I'm not going into great detail here, because I want to try to simplify the entire premise for you, because these studies can be pretty complex. However, can we make it as straightforward as possible? The future in energy demand is uncertain. There are many factors which can influence it. It all boils down to choices. What choices will we make? How do we want to distribute energy across the world? The OECD, which is the traditional West, uses less than half of all the energy, but has only one-seventh of the world's population. The non-OECD, on the other hand, consumes more than half of all the energy, but contains the other 6 billion plus people. This is how the US Energy Information Agency plots it. And this is what it would look like if we would implement Jacobson's solutions program. You can clearly see the discrepancy. The telling thing here is that there has been no growth provisioned for non-OECD countries in both scenarios, while we know that the population of said countries is going to increase by as much as one-third. Since these new people all need fresh water, food, sanitation and other services, it is fair to assume that if energy consumption per capita remains the same for non-OECD countries, that we may add one-third of the energy consumed by non-OECD countries. And that's maintaining a status quo. The status quo means that there will still be hundreds of millions of people living in primitive circumstances, which is hazardous to themselves and to others. So how does Jacobson propose this future of energy poverty and extreme austerity? First, we set the bar at 110,000 terawatt hours, which is 50,000 terawatt hours less than we use today, and 120,000 terawatt hours less than the EIA expects. How are we going to achieve this 110,000 terawatt hours of annual electricity generation? By building the following capacities. 13,000 gigawatts of wind turbines equal to 2.6 million 5 megawatt wind turbines. 30,000 gigawatts of solar panels equal to 69 billion 435 watt PV panels. The funny thing is that we have built around 5.3% of all the wind capacity required and 2.45% of all the solar panels required. The timeline suggests that we can achieve this by 2050, which is 33 years from now. If we would do this in a linear fashion, it would take 
393 gigawatts of wind and 909 gigawatts of solar per year. Contrast this with the actual 60 gigawatts of wind and 50 gigawatts of solar we added in 2015. It seems to be a big leap of faith to suppose that we could increase annual additions from 110 gigawatt to 1300 gigawatt per year within a couple of years. And do note that this is for a 110,000 terawatt hours energy poverty scenario in which no actual growth has been provisioned for the developing countries. Remember that it is more likely that we will reach 200,000 or perhaps even 250,000 terawatt hours before 2050, which is double that of what Jacobson provisions in his own plan. The roadmap is not accurate, nor a moral guideline into the future. Far from it. I would even deem it the opposite, as it provides no credible solutions to actual real-world problems. And this is now being underlined by these two published articles which refute the roadmap. Let's see how disturbing it is when a scientist from an esteemed research institute responds to other people's claims. And do note that there are some acolytes in here too. I wonder whether these people ever had done the simple math required, because it's not that hard also pay special attention to the conspiratorial nature of some of the tweets of Mark C. Jacobson. We have to end this senseless debate. The major problem here is that it has become popularized science which has become embedded in an egotistical narrative of a Stanford University professor. What is more, this narrative has become popular amongst influential people like Bernie Sanders, Leonardo DiCaprio, Mark Ruffalo and Bill Nye. And since these people vehemently back Jacobson, they are complicit in pontificating this unrealistic scenario and widening the divide. In fact, this 100% WWS narrative has now become one of the textbook arguments for left-leaning politicians all over the world, as it is a popular narrative amongst environmentalists. And this is a very worrying prospect, as it already has proven to influence people to make incorrect decisions. For instance, the choice to close the nuclear reactors in Germany, rather than closing the coal plants, or the idea that France can move away from its vast and stable and reliable baseload providing low carbon nuclear infrastructure. These people have no idea what they are doing. They are actually damaging our abilities to fight climate change effectively. In the meanwhile, they blame people like me for being uneducated chills for the fossil fuel industry. And once you tell them that you are strongly opposed to fossil fuels, they dismiss you as being deluded or misled. And it is all thanks to the people like Jacobson and those popular tribesmen following him blindly that this situation is becoming worse. We are not only up against a Stanford academic who is set in his ways and has sunk all his efforts in this paper. We are also up against incredibly popular people who have helped spin the 100% WWS narrative. If only those fossil fuels and nuclear power plants would give up and let us build windmills and solar panels, all will be well. I think that it is completely disturbing that these intelligent people have formed this quasi-cult and behave like cultists who are following a dear leader into oblivion. It is incumbent on the humanist not to follow blindly, but to question popular beliefs and when inconsistencies are found, to point them out. And therefore I have become a small spoke in the wheel of an environmentalist movement which has a well-substantiated case 
and needs to explain that we have to build an all-inclusive energy scenario which will help mankind to decarbonize quickly and efficiently. We want to deploy every low carbon technology in a well-reasoned manner and keep improving as much as possible. It is time to stop this 100% wind, water, solar nonsense once and for all. If you like this video, click the thumbs up button. If you want to stay up to date, subscribe. Thank you for watching.